next up we have our final project, the 10th of the 10 projects that we're going to be sharing with you today. Um, and so this is the Corone AI project. Um, they are based in the, uh, in the US at, the, at UC Berkeley. Um, and so really excited to see um, what they, they built here. It's a really cool project. So I'll let you take a look. And Lawrence will be joining us again to ask the team a couple of questions. So let's take a look at the demo. Corone AI, creating technology for change, because it is time to create technology that helps our doctors. What we did was create a band filled with electrodes that once put on the patient's chest, creates images that can then connect to computer screen for easy access. This computer screen can easily be connected to any dashboard that is accessible by a doctor without the doctor having to be in the same room. Our solution provides doctors with a mechanism that allows them to detect which patient is in a more severe condition and how to allocate their resources efficiently. Our machine gives instantaneous results, is portable, and is much, much cheaper compared to the existing methodologies today. This concept is based on electrical impedance tomography. What this does is it creates a tomographic image because of the intersection points of the different electrodes. As you can see, each red circle in this image is one electrode that emits a tiny small amount of current because of which there is an equipotential change that all the other electrodes face and that each intersection comes together to form a tomographic image. Coupled with our machine learning algorithms, this image is then turned into a 3D illustration of the human lung. With this information, we are able to extract what the lungs look like when the patient is breathing and therefore are able to detect what parts of the lung are affected and any progress in the patient's condition based on the scan from the previous day and the scan that's been done today. Doctors no longer need to bring patients out of their wards and take them to do a CD scan and now they too can practice social distancing. It's time to use technology to help the doctors and nurses who are working so hard to help us. It's time for Coron AI. Hi. Hi, Team Coron AI. Good to see you. Hello. Hello. Great to see you. Doing? Very well. Great. Great. Good. Great, that's great to hear. And we also have Lawrence, uh, who's stuck hey. around with us and, and wants to ask you a couple of questions about your project. So I'll pass it over to him. Yeah, so when Erica asked us like to tweet about this thing, and I tweeted that like one of the projects blew my mind, and it was this project. So I just want to say congratulations, Corona AI. I'm so happy Thank to you. be here. And it's a real <laughs> privilege to actually be able to ask you questions about it. Um, so I'm just going to get right down to it. I loved how you explained the tomography and you built these devices and, and like how many of them did you need and how did you build them? So first of all, thank you for saying that. That was great for us to hear. So unfortunately, or should I say fortunately, our solution was developed while we were in lockdown. And so because of that, we built our first prototype using the nerdy engineering tools that the three of us had together. So that was Raspberry Pis, numerous random sensors, one Velcro strip, and some basic electrodes. So in total, using this equipment, if I can call it that, we were able to develop five initial devices, which we then use for testing and demo purposes. The cloud technology was the most thoroughly developed. Uh, since the lockdown got nothing on the cloud services using the Google Cloud product and sensors for the library with Keras, we trained and tested our models at home on the Google Cloud Collab, which provided us with a lot of resources, also the GPUs. And next, we demoed it on one of our team members, which is Neil. <laughs> yeah, aside from being the guinea pig who was tested on, uh, I was also in charge of fabricating these materials and assembling the hardware, which uh, Anupam and Anushka had uh, gathered. And uh, actually, by using those tools, we could able to make it small, compact, and easy to use. And Neil, your acting skills in the video were fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar worthy stuff. Um, and by the way, I got a ton of old like Raspberry Pis and equipment lying in the closet behind me here. Can you guys come around and like build me a medical scanner out of it? Yeah, <laughs> sure. I'm right. We're there. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then one other question that I had when I was looking at the video and looking at the project was really about the training data that you use because you were able to use training data and you're able to like build these sensors and then turn that into visualizations. So how were you able to convert like the readings from the sensors into those visualizations and how did you train a model around that? Yeah, for sure. So with my background in electrical impedance tomography, I was already aware actually that the technology is able to produce these black and white two dimensional images. And that, you know, in the human body, biological compositions are arranged such that any phenomena appears either clustered or varying over space. So this is what we did with eight electrodes. We used each one and had it send small frequency pulses. And then we measured the equipotential differences experienced by each alternate um, electrode. And then we created a bunch of back projection algorithms, which we applied to this to generate a 3D bio image of the scanned human body parts in our structure. So in Neil's case, it was his lungs. <laughs> this technology is non-invasive, radiation-free, and most importantly, real-time, which of the three of us, Neil was the most thankful for. <laughs> yeah. Also adding to that, the images were like uh, reconstructed using the open EIT library in Python. And we used around like eight electrodes at a frequency of around 50 cycles per second. So like basically 50 uh, times, it's like, it's, it's been calculated every second, like 50 times. Using the techniques of photogra uh, photogrammetry, we were able to construct the 3D model with the high impedance value in the lungs representing the red and the low impedance value representing uh, the blue color thus creating a heat map out of that. Once we had the final representation ready, we did a classification using the uh, convolutional neural network. Yeah, as Anupam said that we used 16 electrodes and 50 cycles per second. So that says that our technology was around 94% uh, accurate uh, with the results. As uh, the data sets that we were using were the MRI scanned images and the heat map images of lungs from the hospitals and data that we got. So around 550 images were used to train the data sets. And we also had some consulting and mentors in biotechnological field who gave us a feedback. Uh, and, the, and he was surely from Harvard Medical School who actually helped us out with the whole thing. Nice. Nice. So uh, just fabulous, fabulous work. Please keep pushing it forward and productize this. I think the world needs more and more things like this. So I'm, I'm so impressed. Congratulations. Sure. Thank, you, Thank so you so much. Congratulations. Yeah, but we're going to pull in a live chat. Let's see what everyone watching has to ask. So one question is, how is it different from other technologies in hospitals? That's an amazing question. And we had that question as well. What can we three students do that would be better than something that's in hospitals? And we realized that sometimes everything great is usually expensive and that might not be the best thing. So the machines in hospitals like MRI scans and CT scans, they're very bulky, they're not portable and they're limited. Because of that, there was often a very long waiting time for a patient to actually be able to get a scan. And we wanted to change that. We wanted to add in an intermediary where patients can get medical screening done so that their conditions don't deteriorate while they're waiting for getting a scan done. All right. Um, just adding a point uh, over that, uh, as we also know in COVID times, it's also very difficult for doctors to actually interact with the patients and just to make it more easy to use. We came up with this band that they could use on their chest and that can be used by the patients themselves to just monitor them, uh, monitor their own health conditions. And that was one of the reasons why we actually integrated it with a band. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing your project with us. We, we, yeah, we just loved checking this project out, watching your demo, see what you build. We really want to see what's next. And um, yeah, really appreciate you being with us here. And thank you so much, Lawrence, for joining us as well. Oh, the pleasure yeah. was all mine. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Peace. Peace.